Hi, and welcome to our presentation on pot warping heat loss effects. If you've ever cooked an egg on an uneven pan, you've probably noticed the side that's up cooks a lot slower than the side that's down in contact with the surface. And so we wanted to explore how much heat loss occurs from pan warping. Now we use pots because we wanted to make sure that we had a flat surface, but this will happen more often in, in pans. All right, so for the process, we created two models in FEA, uh, a warped pot and a flat pot. And um, we needed actual experimental da uh, data. So we performed this experiment on a stovetop using a thermocouple and got data and then applied that to our uh, flat pot. And then that allowed us to correlate heat loss between the flat and warped models. So as we, as we jump into the models, <clears throat> it's important to understand how we modeled it. When we modeled it, we took, uh, think for example, if you took a pan and you looked at it from this side, uh, and then you, you made a cross section of it, so all you had to do was revolve that cross section around the central axis of the pan or of the pot, that's exactly what we modeled. Now the reason that we did that is because in FEA that decreases our computational time but it does not limit our accuracy. It's, it gives us the same value as if we had modeled the entire pot, um, but it also simplifies the modeling that we have to do so it actually makes it more accurate. So these are the two models that we created in FEA. Um, in both of them you can see where we applied the measured temperature that we got from our experiment and then the other, um, the other application was the convection of the air on top of the water and on the side and underneath the pot in the warped model. For the models we actually needed to get specific temperature values from the oven. We also needed to get temperature of the water at the initial. We needed to get um, air temperature of the surroundings and so what we did is we went and we actually measured this. We got a thermocouple and we did the experiment. Alright so the important values here um, are the max element contact temperature uh, which we measured at 307 degrees Celsius and then the air film temperature and the water film temperature. Um, the last two uh, were average values. The air film temperature was an average of the surrounding temperature and the max maximum um, pot wall temperature and then the water film temperature was an average between the initial water temperature and the boiling temperature. Because the air was stagnant, there was no velocity, which means free convection was the only important uh, convection process that we had to worry about. So in order to find the air convection coefficient, we took a Rayleigh number of all the values that we previously talked about um, and compared that to a Neusolt approximation, and we did a uh, unstable flat plate approximation um, for the top of the water, and the reason that we did that is because we assumed that some of the insulation um, from the pot made that top surface of the water a flat plate that was unstable. And so we ended up finding that we had a air convection coefficient of 6.88 watts per meter squared Kelvin. Our uh, model didn't include convection currents, so to compensate for this actual phenomenon, we took a graphical weighted average of the temperature gradients. Uh, to do this we product summed the percent of color segment with the temperature in a specific region and this allowed us to um, insert a mixed fluid temperature for our calculations. So for example let's say the bottom of the of the region is at 304 degrees Celsius but the total area there is 1 24th of the total area um, so we times the multiplied the 304 by 124, 124th, and did that for all the colors and summed them together. In the actual experiments we tested, we got around six minutes um, to be confident that the majority of the water was around boiling point. Um, and so what we had to do in our model was we had to iterate the time and rerun the calculations in the simulation until the average temperature using the graphical approximation method that we described in the last slide until that average temperature was around 95 degrees and what we found is that we were within 5% to 
time of each other, the actual versus the experimental. And so we were very confident at this point that we could move forward and actually evaluate the, the flat model compared to the other warped models. All right, so we uh, did a model comparison and we used the same conditions uh, for each model, including the time to evaluate. Um, for each model, we ran the simulation, um, the, flat, the flat pot, and then one warped, pan, one warped pot with uh, 0 0.1 edge separation from the surface and then another one with uh, 0 0.4 edge separation and both of those had 50 percent contact area compared to the flat pot. Um, and then for each of those we used a graphical approximation like we talked about in the previous slide and uh, that allowed us to calculate a final average temperature for each case. Our next step was to take the previous uh, temperatures found and convert them into uh, stored energy. And so we took the, the mass of the water, which was the same in all three cases, and then we, we took the delta T, which was the starting temperature of 23, and then the final temperature explained on the last slide. And then we found a specific heat for each one of the average temperatures of those individual cases, and we converted those into energy. From the results we got, we found that the uh, warped model with the 0 0.1 edge separation um, had a 29% heat loss compared to that of the 100% contact area model. And same goes for the 0 0.4 edge separation model. It had 36% heat loss. So next time you walk into a department store and they're trying to sell you a new stove, this is why they always tell you to buy new pots and pans when you buy a new stove. The reason is, is because you lose a lot of heat when there's, the, when there's pan warping. Um, in our case, in our experiment, the 0 0.3 distance, 0 0.3 inch distance away from uh, the edge accounted for 7% decrease, whereas the 50% reduction in surface area accounted for 29 percent decrease in heat transfer. So if your pot is tilting at all, you're losing a lot of surface area and thus a lot of heat.